And if you're here today, we're so glad that God is good in this place. I don't know what your 2018 looked like, but can I just be honest with you? You made it to 2019. If we can give God praise for something, it's that he brought us through whatever 2018 looked like. No matter what you went through, God can use it for purpose in 2019. Don't throw away 2018. You learned some stuff that he wants to use in 2019 this year. And so I'm so grateful for it. Lord, I pray, and Lord, in this time, in this presence, I pray, Father God, Lord, that you continue to work in our hearts. Thank you for the moments we get to worship you, the moments we get to speak about you, the moments we get, Father God, to encounter you. I don't take this lightly, Father. Lord, I pray that we would always be a church that creates a space for God to work. Lord, your presence is here. Lord, thank you for answering my prayer. Thank you for being a God who doesn't just sit on the cloud somewhere off in space, but you're so close. You're closer than our skin. You, you live in every believer, and that's a promise. And even if we don't feel you, we live by faith and not by sight. And so we thank you for faith-filled people tonight. We're so grateful for your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You can remain standing for a second. I'm going to read a scripture for you. Um, I'm going to get right into it. Uh, I also wanted to say Happy New Year. I was going to let you know that last week was Church in My Jammies, and uh, that was incredible. If you guys don't know, we had an online experience that was on YouTube. You can still check it out because um, we didn't have church here. And we had over 460 people watched Church in My Jammies, which means one view is the whole family of people. So that's 800 to 1,000 people that viewed in because of our team's hard work. So, Cody, thank you for working hard on that. I really do appreciate it. I know it stressed you out. Some of you are like on vacation, and he's like worried about the social media, and he did a great job. It looks fantastic. And so uh, it's so awesome seeing people encounter what God is doing here. People are intrigued by what God's doing at Authentic Church. Um, and I love this place. I love what you guys are doing and the people you're talking to and inviting. And so we decided that we want to start this year out right. It's 2019, and we want to do it by seeking first. And so we said, let's do a series about prayer. Uh, because prayer is really not this mystical thing. We want to teach our church what prayer is because we believe that God answers prayer. We believe that you're sitting in answered prayer. We believe that I'm standing up here because my mom was a praying mom. Prayer is a huge deal. I am so grateful for prayer in my life. And, and so people ask, like, what's the, what's the difference, Sean? What, what makes you tick? What makes you? I'm like, I love prayer. Like, I just have to find time in prayer. I can't go to sleep without talking to my God wherever I am. And so... Um, so we're going to talk about that, and I want to read a scripture that's actually in Luke um, for you, and then another one, and then you can be seated, I promise. Just stretch them out a little bit. You've been doing good. If you have to sit down because you're like, you know, maybe some things are in pain, I get it. Trust me, we're not going to judge you. But I want to read this. It's actually in Luke, uh, starting in verse 11. This is Jesus. A lot of people have heard this scripture. It says this, Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, Jesus was, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say. So they say, Lord, we see you always talking to your father, and we see how beneficial it is because public, our private prayer leads to public power. Have you noticed that when you pray in your prayer closet privately that you have public power? That's what Jesus had. They said, teach us this. And he goes, okay, here's how you pray. You think it'd be really long, but this is what he says. And if you could help me out, all of the experiences of this, could you read this with me? I'm going to count to three, and you're going to read it with me. One, two, three. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. He says, do you want to learn how to pray? There you go. And so I'm going to take a season to unpack this scripture just kind of phrase by phrase to see how actually deep this truly is and how I'm telling you, if you apply this in your life, you will see a difference in your life like never before. If Jesus prayed, we need to be praying as well. And so I prepared this message for this weekend, and then last night, God said, spoke to me, uh, this in my heart, and he said, Sean, right before I teach him to pray, there's a story that happens in Luke 10. I want you to talk about that first before you go into prayer. And I understand why now, because here's the truth. In Luke 10, we find out about two sisters, one who was distracted from the presence of God. And I found out that we can learn how to pray all the time. But if we're distracted from prayer, we'll never pray. And so we need to talk about the distraction first. And when we get that behind us and we learn to pray, then we will fill that space that was once a distraction with prayer. And so we are going to uproot this thing called distraction, and we're going to talk about it because I believe that we can live in a distracted culture. So I'm going to read this, and I promise you it's not very long. 
And you can sit down. As Jesus and his disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing, making food for Jesus. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, some translations say, Martha, 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 I say a lot, Charlie, Charlie, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Some of you need to hear that. You are worried and upset over all the details. The word for you today is, hey, find the one thing to sit at Jesus' feet and watch him take care of the worries and the anxieties in your life. One thing I found out is it's hard to worry when you're worshiping. It's hard to worry when you're talking to God. It's hard to worry when his, when his presence comes in. It's like the worries of the world will fall off. Are they still there? Yeah, but you have peace in the middle of it. Lord, I thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time. I pray for the next 30 minutes, Father God, that you would bless these words. Anoint them with only your power, Father God, because I know that you want to speak to our church. You already have. Grateful for what you're doing in this place. Thank you for healing my heart tonight. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for meeting me in a real way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give a couple people a high five. Tell them you're glad that they came out tonight and take a seat. Come on, tell them you're glad they're here. I'm glad they're here. All right. I'm glad that they are here. I don't want to take much of your time tonight, uh, not because I'm concerned about taking much of your time, but because I really just want to say one thing tonight that I hope will prepare your heart for the next season that God has for our church. But in this story, we hear about Mary and we hear about Martha. And, uh, and the thing about this is the key theme is we see that Martha is actually very distracted about what is going on in the house, that she's so distracted that she misses out on the presence of Jesus. Now, I love this story because Martha sees Jesus, knows what he's doing, and she invites him into her house. And now, don't miss this because this is awesome. When Jesus is invited in, he comes in. Like, I love that about Jesus. He didn't go, well, what's the house look like? How's it smell? What have you been doing? What do you look like? He says, if you allow to open up your heart and invite me into your situation, to your life, I don't care how messy it is. I don't care how chaotic it is. I don't care what you've been through. I'm going to come into this place, and I'm going to set a presence in that place for you. And so Martha says, Jesus, can you come to my house? And he comes into the house, and then we see her begin to make him food. And while she's making food, Mary is sitting at his feet. But Martha is distracted. Man, we live in a distracted culture. There's so many distractions. Just right now, some of you are super distracted because the bears are playing and you want to check your phone while I'm preaching. Right? You're like, you caught me. Bust it. But I, I want to show you. If you've seen this video, do not say anything. But I want to show you a quick video. I want you to play along with it. And I don't want you to tell anybody if you know what's going on. Don't ruin it for them. But I want you to follow on the video and do your best to follow the instructions. Check out the screens right now. This is an awareness test. Does the team in white make? The answer is thirteen. <laughs> How many people found the moonwalking bear? I need my lights. I can't see. There they are. How many people saw the moonwalking bear that has not seen the video before? Oh, very good. How many people guessed 13? You felt really proud about yourself too, didn't you? You're like, nailed it. And then you're like, what? A moonwalking bear? Oh, no. I love this because I thought about this when I was thinking about this scripture is that a lot of times we can live our life so focused yet still distracted. We can live our lives so focused but still distracted by the most important thing. Martha was so focused on getting the dinner set that she missed out on the most important thing, and that was Jesus' presence. 
Martha invited Jesus into her house. And he was in her house, yet she was still missing out on the presence of God. Could it be as believers that we have maybe invited God into our house, or maybe we come to church every single Sunday, and we come in and out, but we're so distracted by life's worries and life's cares and everything else that even though we invited Jesus into our house, we have still yet to acknowledge his presence in our home? You guys are looking at me like I'm crazy right now. Because <laughs> I know in my life I have gone from point A to point B and have missed out on the presence of God because I've been so distracted by everything else. Martha missed out on the presence of God. Now, I, I think Martha gets a bad rep. Now, I, I've realized that when it comes to siblings that you can have children, right? They have the same DNA but have completely different personalities. I have two girls. And Avery, when she was first born, she spoiled us. She started sleeping all night within the first couple months. Uh, she was doing well, and we were like, yeah, this is great. She was a good color. She didn't cry very much. She ate her food really well. Uh, she was a great baby, and we are like, you know what? She made us feel like we were pretty good parents, right? Like, it was like, it must be us, like, right? It must be us doing the great thing. We are people of prayer. We've been praying for this moment. And so we're like, why don't we have another one? So 18 months later, we had Charlie. And Charlie was nothing like Avery. And Charlie didn't sleep all night, and she still doesn't sleep all night, and she's three years old. And it's a difference in people. And so I look at this story and realize that there's a difference between Martha and there's a difference between Mary. And I feel bad for Martha because Martha gets a bad rep. When Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet, Martha's just trying to make some dinner. And I was looking at this story. I'm like, I I'm kind of like Martha. If it wasn't for Martha's, we wouldn't get anything done. How many people are listening to this and like, come on now? Like, so many people in here are like, that's Martha. I'm Martha. Like, I'm the atypical person. I get Martha. I get that. Like, I'm the one that's looking at Mary like, get up off your butt and do something. I know Jesus is here, but we have food that we need to make. But Martha is distracted by all these details. I mean, I feel bad for Martha because it's not that she was necessarily doing something bad. She was making food for Jesus, yet she was distracted by the best thing. She was doing a good thing, but... Even the good thing can distract you from the best thing, and that's sitting at God's feet. You may be doing a lot of good things, but it can distract you from the best thing. And a lot of us have invited Jesus into our house, and Mary is in the living room hanging on every word of Jesus. And the message translation says, and Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. She was pulled away, preparing food. That's a good thing. And so... I want to take this moment real fast to talk about that, about this thing, distractions. Because before we begin praying and before we pray as a church and learn as a church, we need to find out about these distractions. Because I found out in my personal life that I have been distracted by a lot of things. And if I truly believe that God's presence is the best thing, then why do I keep putting things in front of it? If you want to see your best year in 2019, then make it your best spiritual year of 2019. If you want to see God begin to work in your life, then I'm telling us that there's, I, I say resolutions, it's overrated. But if you begin to put yourself in a position to hear from God, to lean into God, to listen to God, I'm telling you, your life would look completely different. Let's not go through another year doing just good things when we should be experiencing the best thing, and that's the presence of God. Every single day of our life, not just on Sunday, but every single day of our life, he wants us to experience the best thing. I love what the psalmist says. He says, better is a day in your courts than a thousand anywhere else. Can I tell you about that for a second? Let's just talk about that for a second. Because I've been to some pretty cool places that are loads of fun. I mean, I've been to beaches. I've been to Dominican Republic. I sat on the beach with my wife on our honeymoon, and I looked at the white sand and the turquoise water that you could see all the way down to the ground. You could hear the waves. It was all-inclusive, so I could get to the buffet anytime I want and the cappuccino after. It was pretty awesome. I've been to Disney World with my family. It's the happiest place on earth. I've seen some waterfalls. I've seen some amazing things, things that take my breath away. And the psalmist says, I've seen some pretty amazing things, but better is one day just in the presence of God than a thousand Super Bowls, than a thousand times at Walt Disney World, than a thousand times on that beat. He says, just one moment. If this is the moment God's talking about, then why are we still distracted from his presence? If it's truly the best thing on earth, why do we keep running away from it instead of running to it? 
I wonder that myself. And so I'm wondering, what can we do as a church? What can we do as a team? What can we do as directors and leaders and squad members? What we can do as members? What can we do this year to get distractions out? As we learn about prayer, I want to talk about this thing called distractions because there's distractions come in all different shapes and sizes. And you're like, Sean, I don't know what my distraction is. Well, first off, in this thing, we see that she was making dinner. Busyness, being productive, preparing food in this, trend, in this story, it's not a bad thing. She was just working on her hospitality. You know, like grandma, my grandma, right? She's always doing dishes or cleaning or doing something when the whole family's around. And cops are like, grandma, put the dishes down and just enjoy your family. It's okay. We'll help you get it later. But her heart is to serve. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But even good things get in the way of the best thing. What does that mean? It means you might have to say this word this year a whole lot more. And it's going to help you breathe. Work on it together. Ready? Everyone say no. You're going to have to say no to some things. You're going to have to say no to some things that are going to pile on your schedule. People come in and say, Sean, Tuesday night, we got to do this, this, and this. You want to do that? And I go, no. Like that too. No. And I say, no, I can't. Why? Oh, because Tuesday night is date night with my wife. Sacred. You can't touch it. But I do not mess with date night. Why? Because I get to go out with my wife every Tuesday night to work on our relationship. But I have to say no. Why? So I don't get distracted from her. What are you saying yes to every single day that distracts you from the best thing, which is the presence of God? Because every time we say yes, we're saying no to something else. Every time we say yes to one thing, we're saying no to something else. When we say yes to Netflix, we're saying no to something else. Now listen, hear my heart. I'm not going to talk bad about entertainment. I love movies. I'm not going to try bashing you, but I'm just trying to say as we talk about distractions, we have to realize what is a good thing and what is the best thing. Busyness. It may be good. You're working all these jobs. That's awesome. You've got to provide some way. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm not saying that shouldn't be on the top of your list, but even busyness can be a good thing that gets in the way of the best thing. The devil, if he can't destroy you by getting you to do wrong things, he'll destroy you by getting you busy doing good things. He'll just get you busy. He'll just keep pushing and pushing. Do this. Do this. Make everyone happy. She was preparing food, and she was distracted by good things. But as I was looking, I didn't even say this in the first two experiences, so you guys get a bonus. If you were here this morning, you get to learn one more thing that you get distracted by. I was looking at the story, and I was praying over it while I was watching the Bears game, praying that they would win as well. And before I came in, and God showed me something in the scripture that I'd even notice. Martha wasn't just distracted by all the preparations. She was also distracted by Mary. Oh, this is Church 101. Oh, we are so distracted by how everybody else is living their life that we don't even look at the life we're living. Oh, this is what, she's like, look at Mary. We, we get so distracted spending time with God because we're worried about how other people are spending time with God. Well, if they would just change, and if they would just do this, and if they would just pray more, and if they would just worship more, and if they would just do this more, and God's saying, if you would just encounter my presence and pray for them, maybe something would happen. She was so worried about Mary, she didn't even look at herself and say, I'm in the one here clanging, clanging, like I'm throwing pans, huffing, my body language is crazy. I'm looking over at Mary, and here she is just, Jesus. See, we have Marys in the room, right? Marys are the people who just tell you like, hey, let go and let God. And the Marthas are like, hey, let go, and I'll throw a punch you. <laughs> Not saying it's right, I'm working on it. But what I'm saying, what I'm trying to get at here is Martha was so focused on Mary. How different, man, I need to say this. I need to go back in time and say this to 9 and 11. How different would our church be if in 2019 we decided to stop being about everybody else's business and watch closely our own life? <laughs> How much different would we be as a church if we kept getting upset how other people are living their life with Christ? Not saying we're not here to lead them and guide them, but that we would take time to stop looking at the Marys and start looking at herself. Because, man, how awful would it feel to feel like, man, she's, the, she's doing wrong. So much so that Martha actually got Jesus involved in her dysfunction. Have you ever been at a party or a place where the couple start, like, arguing, and you're praying to God that they don't bring you into the argument? Like, you're like, please don't ask me. It's, this happens as a pastor all the time because, well, he's the pastor. He knows. So, what's, Sean, what do you think I should do? And they're like, his wife's standing right there. I'm like, I think I should leave. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Martha invites Jesus in. Martha's getting mad at Mary. And so instead of going to Mary, say, hey, Mary, honey, can you come into there? Can you come in here real fast? 
Nowadays, it's just a simple text, like you're texting from across the house. Hey, can you come into the kitchen, please? Because you don't want anyone to know what's going on. Mary, can, can you come here? No. She doesn't even talk to Mary. She just goes, Jesus, can you tell Mary who's standing right there? Can you tell Mary to come help me? She's just sitting there doing nothing. I'm trying to make the dinner. Can you tell her, please? Thank you. Bye. Right in front of Mary. She was so focused that she thought she was sold out on the fact that actually Mary was being distracted and she wasn't. That she was actually missing her own moment with God. How many of us have missed our own moment with God because we're so focused on how everybody else is living? And Jesus goes, oh, Martha. I think it was just one of those things like, why did you have to say that? Because this is going to sting a little bit. Martha, Martha, you have it all wrong. You're the one that's worried. You're the one that's upset. You're the one that thinks you're doing good and you're focused on everybody else. But I'm telling you one thing. What Mary is doing is significant. You see, I love this, this story because people don't see this a lot. But when Jesus came, he said, I'm the bread of life. Those who eat will have their fill. I'm the, I'm, he says, I'm the living water. Those who drink will never be thirsty again. So actually, there's two dinners happening in this story that people don't even notice. You see, the first one is the physical dinner that Martha is preparing to give to Jesus for Jesus. And how many times do we try to do everything we can for Jesus when he's trying to get something for us? So she's preparing dinner, and she's so, like, food's important. I love that they choose food because food is one of those things we need, we have to have eventually to survive. And so food is an awesome thing. So here's Martha. I mean, Jesus comes in and goes, I'm going to make him some good food. So she starts making the fried chicken. She gets the collard greens going. She gets the corn casserole. I was in the, I was in the south over break, so that's all I'm thinking about right now. We bake everything here. So we're, we're over there eating some barbecue, pulled pork. She gets all this stuff going. Has no help in the kitchen. And then Jesus says, mm. he smells it. It's good. But he says, listen, that's important. That's good. But the most important thing is what I'm serving up. See, you have physical food, but what I have, it's this thing called spiritual food. And you'll never go hungry again. Mary chose the significant thing, the thing that lasts forever. Man, as a culture, we choose all the things that don't last forever for the thing that does last forever. See, God's presence it's something we need in the new year, and we sacrifice that. So not only are we distracted by good things maybe in our life, maybe we're distracted by someone else's actions, but also I think it says here that she was distracted by worry and the cares of the world. It says you are distracted by all these things. Now, I, I want to talk not just about worry, but as I was preparing this, this is what's in my heart right now, and I know our church is dealing with it very strong because some people have come to faith, and they begin to ask me these questions. Now, I started this faith, and now I don't know where I am because when I first came, I felt Christ, and now I don't feel him anymore because we forget that this is actually, faith is not based on feelings. Uh, when you came, you felt Christ because you took a step of faith to church for the first time, and he showed up in your situation. But now that you've been coming for eight months and you haven't been obedient yet, you haven't felt him in so long, but when you step out in faith, you, do, you actually step out in faith first, then feelings follow. It's like going to the gym. Like, I never feel like going to the gym, but if I go to the gym, my feelings are going to feel great after. So when you go, when you step out in faith, when you read God's word, when you pray, even when you don't feel like it, I'm telling you, you'll feel it after you put your faith into action. And then when you keep doing it and then you see the results in the mirror or in your life, you say, I want a little bit more of Jesus. I want a little bit more of worship. I want a little bit more of praise. I want a little bit more of people praying in my life. When you get a dose of it, you can't run from it. And so he's saying, this is the most important thing. But some of us are distracted by this thing, and it's a real thing. It's pain. Man, pain is a big distraction. Because what happens with pain is when you are going through a painful season, you stop focusing on everybody else besides the pain. And I'm not belittling some pain you went through in 2018. I'm not. But pain can, to do, can do two things. It can push you away from God's presence, or it can push you into God's presence. See, I was... Uh, going to see a movie a few years ago. It was actually the first Avengers. Now, this was a big deal, especially for this movie buff right here, because I have been watching Iron Man. I've been watching these movies come out, and finally they announced that the Avengers, all of these Marvel superheroes were going to get together for this awesome movie. It was a big deal. I got tickets early. I told Liz, don't schedule anything. We're going. I don't care if it's Thursday night or Friday night, and it's going to be packed. We are going to see this movie. And so on the day we were going to see the movie, I began to help. Uh, I was landscaping my house with my dad. 
And as we were landscaping, I had to use a mallet. And, and in that season of my life, I was dealing with inflamed tendonitis. Hurt so bad. And, and somebody's like, I have that every day. I'm like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> but I was dealing with it, and I was, like, hitting the, the bricks. And as I got done, I began to feel this, this pain rise up. I'm telling you, it hurt so bad. It was so swollen. It hurt so bad that I couldn't even think straight. And I just remember holding my hand in a specific, if I could just hold it in one place, it wouldn't throb as bad. And we were going to see the movie that night, and so I put a brace on it, and we went to the movie. And I remember being so excited about seeing this movie, so pumped about it. And I remember, like, after we left, a while later, I watched the movie again. And while I was watching it, I caught so many things that I didn't even catch the first time I saw it. And I can tell you why. Because I was going through so much pain during the movie, I couldn't even focus on what was right in front of me. And some of us are going through so much pain in our life that our relationships are struggling, that our relationship with God is struggling, the relationship with those around us. See, what happens is when we begin to live as victims, no one wants to spend time with us because we stop focusing on other people and we always just focus on ourselves. I'm not saying that you don't take moments to heal, but what pain does is it gets us inward when we were created to focus outward. The best way to heal those broken parts in your life is to use your pain and serve someone else. And so in here, we find out that she was distracted and maybe you're here today and there's some real pain in your life. There's some things that you have gone through. There's some situations that have hurt you. There's some people who have betrayed you. There is someone you've lost in 2018 and the pain is real. And you used to come in on Sunday with your hands lifted up in worship. You used to come in on Sunday ready and expecting God to move. You used to come in on Sunday. I used to come in on Sunday and expecting this to happen. But instead, because of the pain, we no longer come in with expectancy because we are so enthralled with our pain. But today is a day that we say, no, no longer is pain going to push me away from the presence of God. I'm going to use this pain to get at the feet of Jesus and the only place that can heal me. He's the only one that can heal you in this pain. Guys, that's what I have to go to when I'm going through pain. When I have nowhere to go and don't know what to say, I have to run to the feet of Jesus. I don't have the scripture for you, but he also talks about the worry and the cares of the world. Yes, we go through pain, but we also worry about financial things. We worry about this culture and things that are happening. In Luke 8, 14, we hear this parable, and Jesus said, Seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares, the riches, and the pleasures of this life, so it never grows into maturity. He's talking about when a person has faith, and the seed is planted, and it begins to grow. Just now, I'm planting seeds into your heart, and they begin to grow, but they said what happens is these thorns called cares and worries and the pleasures of life that we keep envying and looking at, it begins to choke out the thing that God's trying to grow in your life, and we never see it grow into maturity. We're distracted. By what? The worries. We're distracted by all the details. Man, guys, as a pastor, as a leader, I have to be careful that I don't get distracted by all the details and all the minutiae and all the anxieties. It's so easy to run to all the problems to fix them before I run to the feet of Jesus. And Jesus told me, Sean, this church started by you running to my feet, and it's going to thrive by you staying at my feet. You have got to create space to spend time at Jesus' feet listening. It says that she was hanging on every word he said, and everything Jesus said is in your Bible. And you can hang on every word It says, but it says it was crowded out by cares, it was crowded out by riches, and I love this, and the pleasures of this life. I want to talk about that for a moment because when I think about pleasures of this life, what I notice is we live in a culture where we live in everybody else's world but ourselves. It's easy with Facebook and Instagram nowadays. We look at everybody else's life. We see everybody else's cars. We see everybody else's journey. We see everybody else's highlight, and we begin to envy and we want those things. We, want, we grab on to them, and we're always on our Instagram. We're always feeding in our Instagram and Facebook. And I just felt like that before we get into prayer, that God has asked us as a church to talk about these distractions. One of the biggest distractions we have in this culture today is our screens. Our screens have so much. We have a computer in our pocket at all times. And I love how good of a tool social media is. It's a great tool. I'm not bashing it. But if there's anything that is on the throne that God should be on, then we we need to take it off. If other things are getting more time than what God should have in our life, 
It's not just that it's wrong. It's just that we are missing out on the abundant life he has promised for us. And I believe that in 2019, it's hard sometimes to believe that spending time in God's presence is going to be more fulfilling than the thing I want to do in that moment. But he always shows me. He always proves to me. that He always shows up and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And so I look at this phone. And Apple came out with this new thing. I don't know if you saw this in the new update. It's called screen time. How depressing is this? Have you guys seen this thing? Maybe your Android users, real followers of Christ, use Apple iPhones. But anyway, so I'm just kidding. The screen time says that. It says in this case, screen time. So on my iPhone, I can look up just today, but I can also look up the last seven days and what I have been using my phone for and how much time I've been on it. And so if I click on this thing, I'm going to share it with you because I just don't know why I'm doing it. But you guys can hear my life right now. Let me just break this down for you to show you what my time has looked like. And hopefully you can be like, yeah, thank you for sharing. I don't feel as bad with myself. If you really want to, you know, feel good about yourself, find Skylar. Uh, <laughs> find Skylar sometime. And uh, he runs our computer and he'll tell you how long he spent on Snapchat. But we're not going to talk about that right now. Last seven days, Safari, which is my web browser, I spent seven hours and 17 minutes. YouTube, seven hours and four minutes. Instagram, five hours and 46 minutes on Instagram. I'm like, hmm, this, oh, look at the picture of that food. That's cool. Oh, look at that selfie. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, look at everybody else living their life. Seems so cool. I like that. Oh, she's posting another selfie. I'll like it because she's my friend. I don't want to lose her, but oh, my gosh, you know. <laughs> Don't act like you don't do it. Don't act like you don't. I don't know what he's talking about. If you don't know what he's talking about, there people are doing it for you. Anyway, so <laughs> Facebook, five hours and ten minutes. Cardgames.io, I play Euchre. I'm an old man. Two hours and 37 minutes. Bible, one hour and 53 minutes. I don't know what's more sobering to realize that there has been five hours and 46 minutes on Instagram that I could have spent doing anything else. Now, I'm not saying that I'm com like completely against Instagram, but when you look at that in context of seven days, and maybe yours is different. It's not a competition, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I love this quote by John Piper. He said this. He said, if anything, Twitter and Facebook will prove to us in this generation that prayerlessness was not due to a lack of time. I just don't got time. Your screen time says something else. I just don't got time. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. I can't, I, I can't even use that excuse anymore. If, I tell, if you ever hear me say I don't got time, just smack me. I'll get it. I was like, you, I owe that. No, don't smack me. Just look at me and say, Sean, I, I'm smacking you in my mind right now. Just don't really smack me. I, I look at this, and, and I see I'm just being real. I'm just talking to you like I'm talking to myself and encouraging me that, that we have all these distractions. In this story, we see Jesus said, Mary has chosen the right thing. Martha, you're running around like crazy. Here's what our life looks like. We look like Martha. We're going to game. We're going to job. We're going to this opportunity. And we're going to this thing. And then we have this thing this night of the week. And we're preparing. And we're running around. And constantly, we're just running around looking. And then when we go to sleep, we can't sleep because our mind is still running around. We're thinking about tomorrow and all the details and if the money's going to come through and if this is going to happen and, and we go and we go that even when we're trying to sit down in the presence of God, we still are running in our mind that we can't fully embrace who he is. And if that's a problem you have, one thing that I do that's really helpful is get a journal out and whatever those thoughts pop in, write them out so you don't forget them, but put them to the side so where you can get to a point in your mind where you can just sit and hear God that you you can just sit and read his word, and we're moving, and we're moving, and we're moving. And here's Mary. Sitting. When I look at someone doing this, I get anxious. Because, man, sitting still feels like a waste of time. Waiting feels like wasting but waiting season is not a wasting season. God wants to do something in our waiting. If we could just hang on. I'm not saying that we don't work hard. I'm not saying that you go and say, well, Sean said I had to quit my job because I need more time to set the feet of Jesus. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that maybe you should turn off Facebook before you quit your job. Maybe you should check that priority in your life. And so she sits here. 
and just listens. I guess what I'm trying to say is if you could just find time, not just on Sunday, and the worship team, you can come on up, not just on Sunday, but if you could just find time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, just to sit and listen to Jesus. Sean, what do you mean by listen to Jesus? Sit and read a plan in your version Bible app. Sit and open up God's word. Sit and listen to one of these songs that we sing on Sunday and talk with God. Just sit. Be still. Whatever you're anxious about, whatever you're talking about, whatever we're complaining about, talk to God about it. Find time to sit. But it's like, Sean, this doesn't feel productive. doesn't feel like I'm getting anything done. I just don't understand this. And what we do is we run and we run and we run and we run and we run. And I can tell you one thing, that when you sit at the presence of God, he can do in a day what would take you a lifetime of running around. He says, will you sit? Will you turn off the distractions? Will you sit in my presence? Martha, Martha. And I can just hear his heart saying, Martha. Martha, I see you just struggling right now. I know the, I know the dinner. I know, I know you're making it for me. I know you're doing something good. I, I'm grateful. But Martha, if you would just realize the most important thing right now, you might be doing many things. But don't let all the many things rob you of the most important thing. Man, this day and age, there's so many distractions. There's so many things going on. My wife and I um, aren't perfect in the least bit. If you work in kids' area, Avery will tell you what they're praying for back there. That my parents would stop yelling at each other. (laughs) Amen. Yeah. (laughs) Getting heated arguments. But the real thing is this. Honestly. So my wife and I will, will chill out after working hard all day and we we'll want to go in our room because we're tired and we're exhausted. And even though I'm in ministry, I can still make it about work, work, work and filling up, filling up. But I'm never doing it for myself. And uh, we'll go home and we'll watch a movie on Netflix or something or watch a show or binge watch something. And what we'll do is we'll watch it and we'll watch it till about 10 o'clock, 1030 at night. And we're like, oh, it's bedtime. But we're so exhausted by that time that we're like, well, we need to pray before we go to sleep. And so we throw out this, like, half-hearted prayer. Not that God doesn't hear it, but if we truly believe in the power of prayer, why would we not be asking bigger prayers? And so we pray these prayers, and then we go to sleep. We give God, like, the leftover of our day. And I remember we were getting ready to start a movie, and I said, you know what? Before we start this movie, can we pray now? Can we just take a moment, and can we just pray for us, for our kids, for our church, for the people in our church? Can we just pray for our family? Can we just pray right now? And that we'd ask God, and she goes, absolutely. So we grabbed hands, and we started praying for these things, and we started talking to God, and as we were doing it, like, okay, and we finished, and then we started the movie. And I realized that in that moment, what happened was, instead of watching the movie and edging prayer out, we decided to pray, and if we have to, we would edge the movie out. Because at the end of the day, Dr. Strange has never helped me in anything. But spending time at the presence of God has completely restored me. It's taken care of my addictions. It has healed some things in my mind. And so if I can just get to his presence, he can answer your prayers in 2019. But you have to find time to sit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray right now with eyes closed. If you're here and you're running around, you just need to sit right now. If there's distractions, maybe it's your phone, maybe you're constantly on your phone, maybe it's looking for likes, maybe it's people approval, maybe it's other screens, maybe you're watching the news all the time. I don't know what it is. Maybe instead of worshiping worship music, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with secular music. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with any of that music. I'm just saying that maybe you're just listening to that all the time, but maybe you need to find time to listen to some more uplifting God worship music so that your soul can find rest in him. If you're here right now, you just need to sit at God's feet. With eyes closed, could you just lift up your hands to God? Say, God, here's my distractions. Here's some things in my life that I'm looking at, and this is taking faith for me because, you know what, maybe I haven't experienced you fully, but I see that these people have experienced you, and I want to lay some things down right now so that I can experience you in a real way. Lord, I pray right now, Father God, that you see those hearts as people lift their hands to heaven. I pray, Father God, Lord, as they say, Lord, take these distractions. I pray that you would take those distractions. I pray, Father God, as we would realign our hearts with what you want to do in this moment. I pray as we do this, I believe that you answer our prayers. You hear our prayers. I believe, Father God, that that you heard my prayer. Lord, I pray that we would leave these things in your hands right now. 
Maybe we're distracted by how other people are living. Maybe we're distracted by pain in our life. I pray for anyone going through pain. I pray, Father God, that they would realize that in the middle of your pain that you're not absent, that you don't leave when it gets hard, that you are faithful even when it's tough. I thank you, Father God, for your presence that's in this place right now. I pray that we would take this moment, Father God, to sit at your feet. I pray right now that we would get out of the kitchen. We get out preparing the dinner. I pray whatever our mind's focused on right now. Well, I pray that we would just give that to you. It's not important. What's important is that you're in this place and that you hear our prayers and you hear our cries. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. With eyes closed, this is what we're going to do. The worship team, they're just going to sing this song again. And you can sit there right where you are. But I want you to take this moment to talk to God. Sean, I don't know how that, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how to talk to God. Literally just talk to him. Whatever you've been worried about, whatever you need questions about, whatever you're hurting about, just take this moment, throw off the distractions, give them to God. And I want you to encounter him right now while we worship. Just talk with God. Give him some things. Talk to him. Maybe you're angry at him. Tell him you're angry at him and that you need peace. Whatever it is, just talk to him in this song right now in this moment as we sing. I mean, just talk with them. Come on, let's sing this right now.